Searching for extrasolar planets is also a speciality of ESO's other site at La Silla, 500 kilometers south of Paranal. La Silla is a 2,400 meter high mountain and the home of several modern, medium-sized telescopes, including the 3.5 meter new technology telescope and the 3.6 meter telescope. The 3.6 meter telescope is a classical telescope but it has been upgraded and today features what is probably the most advanced spectrograph in the world. With this spectrograph, it's possible to measure minute deviations of stellar motions, strong indicators of the presence of orbiting planets. Very recently, the smallest known exoplanet was discovered. Moreover, the five Earth mass planet lies at the right distance from its host star for water to be liquid. It is thus the most Earth-like planet ever found. The telescopes at Paranal and La Silla are used to observe the visible light and infrared radiation that is emitted from the stars and galaxies. But celestial objects also emit other kinds of radiation, such as radio waves and what astronomers refer to as millimetre and submillimetre radiation. To study these kinds of radiation, scientists need to use a different kind of observing device, and they need to go higher. ESO's third site is a high-altitude plateau named Chachnantor, close to the Bolivian and Argentine borders. At 5,000 meters, ESO, together with partners in North America and Japan, is now preparing for the installation of a huge array of parabolic antennas, each 12 meters in diameter. The antennas are movable and can be arranged in a number of configurations across an area of 18 kilometers in extent. The project is known as ALMA, the Atacama Large Millimeter Submillimeter Array, one of the largest international projects in ground-based astronomy ever undertaken. While observations will commence earlier, the construction phase is expected to end by 2012. But even now, astronomers are active on Chachnantor. Using a modified ALMA prototype antenna, the APEX telescope is already collecting important astronomical data. APEX stands for Atacama Pathfinder Experiment and is a joint project between ESO, the Max Planck Society in Germany, and Chalmers Technical University in Sweden. With observations at wavelengths of the order of a millimetre, one can investigate galaxies which are just formed in the very distant universe. Also, one can study the birth of stars and planets deep inside dense dust and gas clouds which are opaque to visible light. While ALMA is now under construction, ESO's scientists and engineers are planning their next generation telescope. It will be a giant optical telescope with a mirror that could be as large as 42 meters in diameter. For now, we call it the EELT, the European Extremely Large Telescope. Everything about the EELT is gigantic, except for the price. With the VLT, ESO has already used new methods of telescope design and operation to reduce cost. For the EELT, ESO has developed a revolutionary approach that will bring down the construction cost significantly. The estimated cost is in the region of 800 million euros, roughly equivalent to, for example, three new A380 passenger aircraft from Airbus. The EELT will open totally new horizons for humanity's quest to understand the universe. It will be capable of measuring directly the variation in the rate of expansion of the universe throughout its entire history, providing unrivaled essential information about dark matter and dark energy. It will be able to image extrasolar planets and determine the composition of their atmospheres and thereby possibly reveal the existence of traces of life. 
It will peer into the deepest reaches of the universe and witness the birth of the very first stars and galaxies. It may eventually revolutionize our perception of the universe as much as Galileo's telescope did. One of the most basic aspects of being a scientist is to dare to ask questions. Questions about some of the most fundamental features of our life and of our world. How was the universe created? How and when did the first stars and galaxies emerge? And why did they form? How did our Earth come into being? And are there other planets out there that could host forms of life? One of the most fascinating aspects of being an astronomer today is that, thanks to modern technology, we can now build instruments, telescopes, spectrographs and cameras, with which we can really search for these answers. And as we continue in our effort to understand the world, we discover new riddles and new questions. Science gives us the tools to understand and answer these questions.